Upon moving to Georgia, I've become fascinated with the indigenous species of freshwater fish. Yeah, the game fish, but more than anything else, you guys know I love to look for native forage fish. And that would be the smaller fish that the larger fish are eating. Now, I've come across some really interesting species. Some of them are big game fish. Some of them are extremely protected, like the lake sturgeon. Uh, I definitely want to get that in the books as far as painting one because they're found very close to where I live. But today we're going to concentrate on a smaller fish. This is the moon eye. Now one thing you guys might notice about this particular one, yes I'm doing it on a baby bull shad, and I have this black. And the reason that I have it black is that the undercoating of this is going to be black. So I have an everyday ordinary screen, and because I've got a little ridge here and two eyelets here, I'm looking to see the best way this is going to fit. Now I can probably just wrap this. I want this sticking out from, let's see, I want it stick, I want the tail to stick out from where I'm putting this down because I don't want to get the tail messed up in doing this wrap. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to here, kind of right in the middle. And then I'm going to press this down and you'll notice that I'm absent some lights. I'm hopeful that we'll have some actual studio lights in here at some point. Um, I've been told that they're coming, um, but it's been a couple of weeks now. And once the lights are in, then it will be much easier for me to give you guys quality video production. So until that happens, sincerest apologies. So I'm just kind of moving this around on here until I can get a spot. And because it's window screen, there's a little bit out of it. But I'm certain that I can find an area that's going to be suitable for what we need to do today. Let's see if that'll do it. Now all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of pressing this to mold it in. Um, and yeah, I could use expensive stencils, I could use produce bags, there's a lot of different things that I could do to achieve scales. But what I'm, what I'm trying to focus on, at least for the next couple of months, is the hobbyists, you guys out there, that may or may not have different things. And I'm trying to make this an accessible channel to where that anybody can use everyday household products to achieve a fairly decent replication of the fish you're trying to paint. So I've got this, I'm fairly happy with this now. I'm going to take this and curl it down over top of it, just this area right here. Push that back up. And now we're going to grab now these little alligator clips, I get them by pretty much like a hundred. You can get them on Amazon and I do have them linked in the description below. They are kind of essential when you're working on different molds or stencils because they really help keep this down and in place when you're spraying. So we're just going to get this going here. And because it is a wire mesh window screen, we're going to not need to do as much because it'll, it'll pretty much stay in place. Maybe a couple more. One here in the middle. And basically we're just doing this so it doesn't move around while we paint. Now if you guys want to play along with wherever my, I think it's going to be in the top right, and I'll be mindful of that as I spray, um, we're going to 
show you guys what the end product is going to look like and hopefully we'll get close to that because end product being the fish and because we're just going to do this I'm not going to pull my exhaust on this one quick spray my pressure right now is about 30 35 somewhere in there I'll lift this up just so I can get that little spot I'm trying to be mindful and not do the tail here and all I'm doing with the black base here and the netting or the, actually the window mesh is we're going to get some fairly decent scale markings I don't need to go super dark or super heavy with this spray because I don't want it to leak underneath where my mesh is. And the very next thing I'm going to do, and no, I have not heat set just yet, is bring a little bit of pearl white. That's just a Createx pearlized white. I'm going to go over this, kind of give that a little bit of a shimmer. You can see in the picture there's quite a bit of shimmer on this fish. Almost look like they have paper scales. And uh, the reference that I'm using for this photo is from uh, Georgia uh, Department of Natural Wildlife and it is the um, field guide to fishes of the Conestoga River System which is up near me in North Georgia. Well, there's just a little bit of pearl and there's a whole lot of shimmer in this fish. Some of the uh, species that I've seen show just a tinge of gold and then a little bit of pink towards the back side of this fish near the anal fin. So we're just going to be as subtle as we can with some of the markings on here. I'll probably come across the top and do just a little bit of gray. But towards the head, we've got just a little bit of what I'm going to use is opaque sky blue. Just about a drop in here. And I'm actually going to angle this across so that the paint is hitting forward here. I'm going to angle across the top here. Come across the very back and then angle across the top on the other side. So now you can see just a little bit of that blue on the top. We're going to heat set that. Heat set. Next color I'm going to be using is this Auto Air Aluminum. Make sure I get all the junk out of the top here. And just a couple. It's almost white, but not. Pressure's up around 35. Now I'm going to come back over the other way across this blue so that just a hint of the blue is left. You guys can see that I'm angling the airbrush straight across the back here. Now I've got just a uh, just a little bit of this Graftobian 
the silver. I'm just going to run the tip of my finger through that and you can see how shiny that is. And I'm going to kind of randomly add some of that into these little areas here and I'm going to do it on both sides. That's going to give it even more of a flash and pop. You can even take a brush, if you guys have a small brush handy, and I do, just a, a round brush, and kind of work that in to some of the areas. And because it's powder, I'm going to add some of this opaque pearlescent from Comart. Very low pressure because you don't want to blow it off the bait. And just come over this real easy and get that to set in. And then we'll heat set that. Next thing we're going to be doing is adding just a little bit of detail smoke black. Not much. Just enough into a couple of the uh, edges of the scale here just to accentuate these scales. We're going to try and do this in a manner that makes sense. I'm going to shoot this this way. And you got to get real close you almost want to look like you're missing it. going to pull these off now and take the screen off. We've got our imprinting, but now we need to get rid of the scale marks on the head, clean this up a little bit, add in our pectoral fins, and finish up this bait. We're going to come back into the head area. I've got a fairly low pressure setting around 20. I just want to clean up the scale mark. Only because it's more obvious in the head. And while fish do have scales in their head, they just look a little bit cleaner. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes when it's not there. So I'm just using a light spray here. I'm going to come back with this silver. Just add a little bit to my finger here and get rid of that stark white. Just drop that silver in to the face. And push that and you'll see how shiny that's gotten. To finish this off, I'm going to put some smoke black right back in the chamber. About two drops. work down this edge along the back. 
get that dorsal fin. Give it a little bit of a profile. Not much. Doesn't have to be super dark. Going to accent this fin. Now this is something that I have used for an ear flap before, but it also gives just a little bit of definition if I hit that edge. Do the same thing there. One of the last things that I've done is I've added a little bit of this Comart Pearl Essence and we're gonna just hit this one more time. I also have just a hint of this pearlized copper and I'm gonna bring that onto the, um, the pectoral fin here. down just a wee bit. We're going to give this a good heat set. Well, I'm going to stay real simple with the eyes. Just use some silver five millimeter because that's what they have in real life. Just grab a little bit of glue. Now, if you want to put the eyes back in and they're in good shape, these baby bullgills and bullshad come with a yellow eye, but I'm going to try and stay true to the nature of the eye and give it a five millimeter silver. And just drop that in. And voila! And there we have it. Simple, effective, match the hatch, small waters, moon eye. Indigenous native to Georgia and most of the southeastern United States, all the way up into Manitoba, Canada. There are some variations on the species, but this is the moon eye for the Conestoga water system. I sure appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. I hope that I was able to teach you a couple of things today. I hope that you enjoy the pattern and try it for yourself. I can't wait to see all the moon eyes that uh, you guys send me pictures of on social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this channel and supporting us. Have a great day and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates at Bullshad Studios.